All right, folks, listen, uh, thanks for joining. Thanks for uh, sitting through all these uh, interesting and uh, informative sessions. Uh, I'm going to spend the next 15, 20 minutes talking, as Ron mentioned, about hybrid cloud storage. Um, Ron clearly knows about Nasuni, right? He's ready to give a presentation anytime. However, many of you may not. I'll share a little bit of information around Nasuni. It might be the uh, most important company you've never heard of. Who knows, right? But there are we are literally, well, we're approaching a thousand customers. We're just shy of a thousand customers. That'll change uh, this year. Uh, and, you know, without going through all of this, there's, uh, as you can see, this is a product that is in use across a great many organizations, many of which you have heard, right? There's, there's a lot of logos there across a, a wide variety of industries. And, uh, and there's other logos that from companies that, well, they're not there because we keep, we're not allowed to show them. But suffice to say, um, the approach to managing this is built around an architecture that is natively designed for hybrid cloud storage, uh, managing hundreds of petabytes. And maybe the most important thing, uh, actually is the most important thing from our perspective is the level of customer satisfaction and retention that, that we have seen with this, with this product. This is a product that is now entering its 10th major release. Um, so it is battle tested, hardened, uh, and as you can see in use across a wide variety of organizations, uh, with very high levels of satisfaction and rankings. And it's a, you know, we're, we're talking about the hybrid cloud, but we're also talking about multi-cloud here, right? We heard from Google earlier. Um, th this is the kind of environment that takes advantage of object storage across a variety of different cloud providers, whether they be public, the big three as we know them, or even some uh, uh, private cloud providers. So enough about Nasuni. I know a lot of you are uh, perfectly capable of visiting nasuni.com to learn more. So we'll move on about Nasuni. We'll talk about hybrid cloud file data. Why is this important? Because as Gartner puts it just earlier this year, this is a, there's a lot of movement in this direction. Some of you may have already said, well, we've moved stuff to the, we've moved information to the cloud. We've moved file data and you may have. Um, I'm also, also, we're also gonna talk about architecture elements here that are critical to doing this the right way. There's a lot of solutions out there that you simply have, you know, lift and shift into the cloud and you've got, a, you've got all the similar limitations that you had with your previous on-premises environments now conveniently located on somebody else's servers. You still have the same limitations and problems, but to do this right, uh, and as you can see, many folks are, um, you really have to think about that architecture. And uh, so, and, and why do you do this? Why do you care? Because this, right? This is, <laughs> this, this may not map your environment, but it, yours might be worse. Uh, it might be, or, or certainly, you know, as interesting or if not more so. But you've got to deal with a lot of the same problems. Every organization's got file servers. They've got NAS silos. They've got NAS scattered all over the place. Um, you have to worry about backup and recovery uh, of your file data, and being, you know, and having the appropriate software to protect that data and recover it quickly. Uh, and you've got off. You've got DR sites. You've got offsite backup. You've got, you know, in our even in our post-COVID world, we've got lots of remote offices and folks working in hybrid environments, you know, at, if from the home. And uh, all of this just, you know, introduces a level of complexity that is very exciting to, and not to mention some challenges with shadow IT. And, you know, let's throw it in SharePoint and share it that way and we'll over throw it in Box or what have you. So all this introduces security concerns, duplicate files uh, and duplicate data stores that are, end up being redundant uh, and just a, a host of other complexities when it comes to managing your data. And, you know, all of these, these sort of we'll call them pre-cloud struggles, right? Some of these are gonna sound familiar to you, right? The amount of file data that is, that is growing in an organization uh, is estimated to you know, grow at a 10X level by 2030. And that's not that far away. I know it's only six, seven years, but the, the amount of growth is, is frightening almost, right? And file data is, is generally your, the, the biggest percentage of the data under management in an organization, typically around 80%. Right. Um, so there's there's a lot of data and it just keeps coming. So when you want to get away from a complex and costly data center environment, like I've just sort of illustrated in that basic model, um, you, you've got to think about a, a couple of key things that uh, that relate back to the architecture to how you're going to do this without introducing the same problems in a different environment. Right. And um, we you talked about the fact that we've got a distributed workforce. Most of us have offices, individuals scattered to the four winds, work, you know, collaborating, working together. How do I facilitate that and address the aggressive security threats that are out there? They're not just getting worse, they're getting more complex. And uh, this concept of cyber storage or security built into the environment is increasingly um, important. So when we talk to customers about, well, why would I move? Why would I need to go to cloud? I, I, 
these three things, if I don't do these things, basically nothing else matters is, is, the, is our argument. Like if I can't move to, why would I move if I can't provide truly what we're calling effortless scalability? Like the ability, you know, you know, we'll get into that a little bit more about being able to bring in other data sets, acquire entire companies and bring that into the fold very quickly, right? And grow as I need to grow without, uh, without, uh, without issues and without limitations that you would typically encounter with a NAS system. Um, I've got to have built-in security. Security is unfortunately never going to go away as an issue. I've got to be able to quickly recover and uh, and and have a robust environment that is with security built into the environment. And I've got to be able to deliver the performance, the land-based style performance that I'm, my users are familiar with, that my applications require. So it doesn't matter that folks are scattered to the four winds or I've got offices in Singapore and Kuala Lumpur and LA. I've, you know, I, I've, I've got to deliver a minimum uh, level of performance in something that they're familiar with, with the, especially when they're familiar with local access, right? So if you're not doing these things and this isn't true, then frankly, it's not worth doing. Um, and this is what this is what Nasuni does basically, right? It gives you that effortless scalability, built-in data security and a fast edge performance in a single environment and it allows you to consolidate data in a way that sets you up for greater business insights via data intelligence and being able to leverage uh, outside AI uh, providers with you know, being able to uh, gain and have access to and build information off of uh, and with, integrated with other LLMs. And just a peek behind the, behind the, the curtain here, right? Um, this is, how does this all work? How, you know, tell me Lance, I hear effortless scalability. Sounds like a marketing buzzword. Well, uh, it, effectively, you are removing all limitations that you that you had from before with a NAS or environment, even if it was ported to the cloud, even if you're using Azure files today, or if you're using uh, Amazon Web Services files, you there are inherent scale limitations, even in those environments that, you know, so for organizations that need to avoid that, which is most organizations, um, you know, you simply need to rethink that architecture and how you want to take a look at it. Um, key to all this is leveraging object storage within the cloud providers. And, and object storage has a number of benefits, one of which is a significant cost reduction, which I'll mention early, uh, later. Um, but it's, uh, it, it allows you to scale without limits on directories, without file size, without number of volumes. Uh, you can simply, and you can add multiple volumes as needed. There's no, there's no limitations in terms of managing your data and, and, and importantly, consolidating lots of disparate systems. We work with lots of customers that Many of those logos you saw a minute ago, um, they had, you know, in some cases, dozens of different uh, file systems that they needed to consolidate. And you can imagine if I can bring those all together, you know, talk about a headache that is removed. Um, <laughs> it's, 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 it's quite a breath of fresh air. From a security perspective, real quickly, there's, you know, this idea of object storage with an, an infinite number of immutable snapshots. So from a, from a security and even a, a compliance and data governance perspective, I've got I can go back to literally any version of any file at any time, and uh, and and I can take snapshots as you know very as as often as I want. I don't have limitations as I do in other systems. So uh, we have customers with <laughs> sometimes some long term customers have like literally millions of snapshots, right? Because something something you can't, you've got to keep the data around. Um, you don't have to do that, of course, but in some cases you need to. It's where you're required uh, by law or by policy to be able to do that. And this is all fine and nice that to have uh, be able to grow as I want and, and manage files and have a built-in security. But if, if I don't deliver performance to my end users, it's probably not worth the time of day. Um, and so what what the SUNY does is in this hybrid sense is that we're we're leveraging the we have the ability to have virtual machines that are set up um, usually locally, um, but often they can also be in the cloud if you want to take advantage of a local region. But you have these uh, these virtual machines that do intelligent data orchestration and caching for you. Um, so basically, in a nutshell, being smart enough to know which files people are using in that location uh, and caching those, obviously, that that eliminates a uh, people say, well, what about the egress fees? Like those are almost entirely go away when you do this right with the intelligent caching and all the active files that you're using across different locations. But it keeps basically it keeps everyone in sync. And so when you're dealing with you know large organizations where you've got dis disparate offices, now I know that. I'm looking at the single version of truth and I'm not worried about file replication or changes that occurred in one location that never made it to the next or made, never made it to my location, right? Which uh, you know, can cause serious problems and delays in productivity. So 
that's you know a, a whiz bang look at some of the architecture. But why would you bother with this? Why would you move file data to cloud? I like you know I like it on premises. I like my data where I can see it. <laughs> Said no one ever. Um, but why would you want to move your data to the cloud? There's kind of four main reasons. One is cost avoidance and modernization, right? So many organizations, I'd say increasing number of organizations have cloud first initiatives. Get, let's reduce the number of data centers we have. Let's eliminate the number of our data centers, right? Let's, let's, uh, let's shut her down and, uh, and move it all to the cloud. There's any, that has a number of benefits, certainly from a, from a management perspective and, and the and a physical hardware and footprint uh, and a carbon footprint perspective, that is often a, a big driver. Uh, it also has huge cost reductions and cost uh, cost uh, savings that are, that are realized when you suddenly don't have that infrastructure, right? And uh, along those lines, from a from a risk reduction persp perspective, you know, I want to be able to, you know, with a, with a with a proper implementation of the cloud, you have ransomware threat mitigation and detection built in, right? That built in security, and you you want to be able to recover very quickly. When I've got a, a when I've got all those immutable snapshots that I mentioned earlier, when you've got that sort of environment, recovering a file, recovering thousands and thousands of files, recovering entire volumes is very fast. Why? Because you're not actually copying file from or remounting a volume and copying files from point A to point B. You're simply moving pointers to those files back to the previous known good, good version or previous known accessible version, and you're on your way. So that has uh, significant benefits from a disaster recovery perspective, uh, you know, when, when, when something horrible goes wrong, I was talking to a customer recently, or they had power outage for three days. It was, it was very simple for them to switch over and remount and, and point their users to another location and they're on their way. There was no, most of them didn't even know <laughs> that they were accessing, uh, that, they were, that were, they were being bypassed at all. I mean, and clearly having, doing a lot of consolidation, bringing this all together into one single global namespace, which is what you do with a tool like Nasuni, there's a huge uh, benefits in terms of simplifying how I administer my environment. I'm not administering 10 different uh, NAS systems. I'm not having to worry about different file and backup tools. All that goes away. And uh, so obviously that just makes your life a whole lot easier. And then the other benefit from having a single global namespace where users can access from anywhere uh, with local caching is just from a productivity experience. You know, organization, it's not just about sharing Word documents and spreadsheets or PowerPoints is, you know, it's about sharing real business files, uh, you know, CAD, CAD drawings, you know, uh, uh, Adobe InDesign files, you know, very large, um, you know, architectural and engineering drawings, whatever the case may be, centralizing and sharing that information becomes significantly easier in an environment where everything is, is centralized and, and makes your secure access concerns um, go away. So let's talk about a couple examples um, because you know we only have 20 minutes together and, I, and uh, there's a lot to say. This is a, it, it, there's a lot of benefits here, but it's probably worthwhile just to show you some a couple of examples. Here's one. Here's a company that really no one's ever heard of, right? Coca-Cola. <laughs> um, this was an interesting scenario for them because this is uh, you, as you can see here they were they were moving. They had an all cloud strategy, right? They they were doing a cloud first move, um, and they but latency and performance was critical to them. Right, they they had to maintain and and improve upon existing file access performance, um, and so uh, they did that as part of their move to the cloud. They they ended up choosing the SUNY to be able to move, as you can see, they've got you know over a quarter peta, petabyte corporate file data in one single environment. Just another couple of examples. This is an engineering organization. Um, this company was on NetApp, right? They had they had actually so was Coca Cola. They had started to move to the cloud and realized that wasn't that architecture wasn't going to work for them. Um, similar vein, this architecture firm moved to uh, to Nasuni to get to begin to improve the sharing of files and getting rid of those silos of file data uh, and slow file recovery. They were they were dealing with a, a number of issues. You know, nothing like a customer that has been through an outage or been through an attack, and when things don't go well, you make a change, right? <laughs> uh, and that's and that's exactly what they did, so that they could do more efficient global file sharing. One of my personal favorites. Uh, although I am more of a gin guy, um, you know, is uh, Pernell Ricard. And uh, they're out, they, they, as you might imagine, they have a lot of different locations. They have hundreds of brands, absolute just being one of them. But um, 
they had uh, they had experienced some of that slow file recovery problems. They need they needed a way that they could eliminate their file backup, and get off that sort of traditional thinking of how to, how I back up my files, and um, and just you know not have to worry about it, quite frankly, and be able to better collaborate between all of their different locations in a single global namespace in the cloud. Okay, maybe one more. Um, you know, this is a, an, an an oil firm, and you know, this is a classic case. Uh, where you've got you know you've got rigs out in the ocean. How do I how do I quickly and and uh, securely share data you know back and forth and with you know with information from the rig and from the activity going on there? How do I how do I how do I expand on that and do it the right way? Um, this is a case where they went to a cloud hybrid storage model. They went to the SUNY, but they were um, they, again they didn't they wanted a single place for file storage, a single namespace, a single way of approaching backup and disaster recovery, and in their case. Careful, jumping ahead here. In their case, uh, you know, they were saving twelve million dollars on their of their previous legacy costs across all their locations and all of their data. Um, for twelve million dollar savings, uh, I think most companies would uh, pretty much jump through a lot of lot of hoops. But this was a this was an easy hoop to jump through for them because migrating to the cloud is a fairly straightforward and uh, well known process. Um, I'll wrap up with this. This is the you know this is the geek out architecture slide, right? But um, Couple things to look for as you think about hybrid cloud file management and moving to the cloud. You know, who doesn't want to save money? Who doesn't want to improve or maintain performance? Simplify administration. No one in this room is or on this call is going to say no to that, right? But it's the architecture behind it that is super important. Can't stress that enough. Um, you know, this is as we kind of illustrated. You know, this is a an architecture where all you know gold copies of the data are stored in the cloud. Um, versions are synchronized down to an intelligent caches at the edge. Um, all this is managed in a single location. You know, this single global file system based on object storage gives you built-in data protection, built-in security, um, and the kind of performance that you need at the edge. There are other services you can you can use in terms of uh, you know file sharing securely across with you know partners and collaborators and your remote employees. There's augmentations you can do from a ransomware protection so that you use these edge devices not only as intelligent caches, but effectively your early warning detection system. So that you're you're and if something happens in one of those remote offices, you immediately no, are notified. Events are fired off. You can alert your security operations team. All that kind of goodness. And then you know I hinted at this before, but one last quick thing here: that once you have all of your data consolidated in a single environment, right? And, and even if you are using multiple clouds, but from from an access perspective, that if you're in a single global namespace, you can imagine that you, know, you can then do um, you can leverage that data from a data intelligence perspective, searching it, tagging it, classifying it, being more compliant. And, and as I mentioned, being able to potentially leverage uh, AI integrations for additional insights. So doing all this, just a quick illustration, this would all be great, but if it costs more, it would no one's probably gonna do it, right? <laughs> so um, when you think about the, your, your file infrastructure, the, the backup infrastructure, disaster recovery, all of those factors that go into storage, and when you consolidate and simplify in a hybrid cloud object storage model like the SUNY, your savings are going to be significant. Um, uh, absolutely worth considering, I would encourage you. So um, when you, as you look at these various tools that are out there, and listen, you know, the SUNY is not the only one. It's the architecture is absolutely the most robust, is built from the get-go to be cloud native. It wasn't ported from an on-premises architecture and have, dealing with that legacy issues behind the curtain. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. And it's certainly well proven. The cost and the economics behind it are absolutely worth considering and <laughs> worth the worth investigation. Um, the scalability, as I mentioned, you can effortlessly scale as you wish, grow, expand, acquire companies, whatever you need, it's easy to do. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, literally a, a series of point and click exercises to do that. We're talking about cyber storage and built-in security, the fact that we can detect and mitigate um, ransomware attacks at the edge, the bat, you know, the the uh, immutable snapshots, and the ability to recover very quickly, much more quickly than traditional backup or recovery models for the most part, and you know, delivering performance so that really no one no one else knows, right? The, the move to the cloud should be one of those things that everything changed, but nothing changed for the users. Nothing changed for your workflows, for your application processes. Right, that's how it should be. No one, no one should even know, and that's how it is when you when you uh, when you choose the right architecture and make the right move. Listen, uh, that was a that was a whirlwind. 
I'll, I'll, I'll grant you. Um, I think I did pretty good. I'm a little maybe over time, but uh, listen, uh, as you think about your files and think about how you manage data in your organization and the amount of data you've got, I would implore you to investigate how you can take advantage of a hybrid cloud storage solution like Masuni. You can scan this QR code with your phone right now if you'd like to take a picture. Um, you just go to nasuni.com. You can visit nasuni.com directly. Of course, there's a host of additional information that we could never get into just in this in this 15, 20 minutes today. Uh, but you can do your own exploring um, and you can learn more about, about the benefits that you could be bringing to your organization. I hope this gave you a nice sneak peek into the world of hybrid cloud file storage. And uh, with that, Ron, I'm going to turn it back over to you.